Hi everyone, I'm Cinder A9, and welcome to Let's Play Fire Emblem, also known as uh, FE7, Fire Emblem 7, because this was the seventh game in the series. But, like I said in my introductory video, which I hope you watched, this was the first game to come over uh, to Europe and North America, first one done in English, so it was just named Fire Emblem. We're going to start a new game. Prologue, a girl from the plains. You are a tactician traveling across Elam. I hope I said that right. If not, I'm gonna butcher a lot of the a lot of the words like that. If I do, I highly apologize. Set your name, birth month, and gender. Use the control pad and the A button to enter info. To start with the default settings, simply select no. Enter information? Yeah, I'm going to. So you are playing as a tactician. You, the player. So, I'm a tactician. How many? I can. Okay, cool. <laughs> there are three, uh, or there are, uh, seven, seven character slots. So, I can actually put Syndral. Hooray! If not, I would just shorten it to Sen. Syndral. Okay. Birth month, April. This will determine, your birth month determines the uh, element you are. It has a slight bearing on, on characters. I'll get to that way later. Don't worry about it. Choose your birth month and then if you're male or female. I'm male, obviously. Also, I thought I had you put in your full uh, date, or at least the day as well, but it doesn't, so that's okay. But just because it's a fun fact the day this is going up april 3rd is my birthday so uh feel free to wish me happy birthday if you so choose yes let's get started we get prologue a girl from the plains are you awake I found you unconscious on the plains. I am Lynn of the Lorca tribe. You're safe now. Who are you? Can't you remember your name? Your name is Syndral? What an odd sounding name. But pay me no mind. <laughs> it is a good name. I see by your attire that you are a traveler. What brings you to the so uh, I think it's so Sake Plains? So Sake Plains? Again, I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce them because they've never been said. There is no voice acting. I'll be providing uh, voices to the best of my ability. So uh, any words I get wrong, I do highly apologize for. Would you share your story with me? Hmm? What was that noise? I'll go see what's happening. Syndrome, wait right here for me. Oh no! Bandits! 
They must have come down from the burned mountains. They must be planning on raiding the local villages. I... I have to stop them! If that's all of them, I think I can handle them on my own. You'll be safe in here, Sindral. What? You want to help? Well, can you use a weapon? <laughs> uh, no, I can't. But I am a tactician, so maybe I can help out that way. Ah, I see. So you're a strategist by trade? An odd profession, but... Very well, we'll go together. Alright, let's go. And there I am, the green person. Hi. Over here! The, the green colored one. If you want to help, Sindral, I could use your advice. I'll protect you, so stay close to me. Okay. Unit information. Lynn is the blue unit. Enemy units are red. This goes... is pretty standard for the Fire Emblem series as a whole. Units that you can control are blue and are friendly units. Units that are green, like me, the tactician is, are allied units. Uh, you don't control them, but they're... but they're on your side. Enemy units are red. That way it's an easy... it's easy to determine who's ally and enemy. I'm green. Essentially, battle consists of blue, allied units, and red, enemy units, taking turns moving on the field. You're only here as a strategist, Syndral, so you'll only appear during special events. Yeah, I only appear during special events. But, being your Let's Player, I'll also talk. <laughs> so, my job as strategist, or your job as the player, is to place the cursor on blue units to issue their orders. First, select a unit. Place the cursor on Lin, and press the A button. So, the prologue acts as a tutorial. Really, the first so many chapters of Fire Emblem act as, a, act as a tutorial. Now, I said I was going to be doing different things for this LP. I'll be going over a lot of things in detail that maybe the game doesn't do. The game has a pretty decent tutorial to teach people, but uh, I'll be going into even more, more depth. So, at the upper left corner, you can see uh, you, the unit you have selected. If it's an enemy, sometimes the enemy has a name, sometimes it doesn't, like here, and amount of HP, or it's just generic, like Bandit. Or you can see a character's name, and their HP. The bar underneath it is still their HP, it's just in bar form instead of number form. In the lower right is the terrain you're on. Different terrains give different bonuses. If you've ever played a game like Advance Wars, or kind of any strategy game, uh, you know that some terrain gives defensive bonuses. So, for example, forest gives plus one defense to units that are on it, and plus 20 avoid. Again, don't let your head spin. It'll all make sense if it doesn't. I promise I'll go over it, especially as we go further into the game. At the upper right is your objective. Seize gate, which will be here. See gate. And you see in the uh, bottom right. The, uh... Terrain will, the terrain will change from left to right depending on where the cursor is. That way you have an easy way to see things. Okay. I need to be closer to the enemy. You've selected Lin. When a unit is selected, the map changes colors, like so. Lin can move anywhere in the blue area. This goes for all units. The blue will show you where you can move your unit. Move her to the space with the flashing cursor. Place your cursor there, and then press the A button to finish. The red spaces, just to go ahead and go over it, although I think the game will eventually, is where uh, the unit can attack. Lin, as you can see, can attack around her in a space of one. Yes, yes, this should be close enough. So we'll wait here. Uh-oh, that bandit spotted me. He's coming this way. After all of your units move, the enemy moves. And you go through phases like this. You take your turn, and then the enemies take their turn. And then back and forth. Let's close in an attack. Select Lin. Easy enough. Move to one of the areas adjacent to the bandit. I have to be right next to him to attack. So let's move here. Now, strike! Then you have options. 
wherever you are. So now we'll select the attack option. Select attack. Now you will choose a weapon for the unit to use. Uh, Lynn is a swordswoman. She uses sword. Well, it's not her official class, but <laughs> we'll go to that in a little bit as well. At the upper left, you see it says, I or the, yeah, the upper left, it says iron sword. This is the weapon that the unit is going to use. As we'll play through the game, we'll get more weapons. The 46 is how many times you can use the weapon. It's its weapon, it's the weapon's durability. When the number reaches zero, the weapon breaks. Different weapons will have different amount of uses. And then on the uh, lower right, you have additional stats. Uh, critical chance, attack, uh, hit, hit percentage chance, and avoid. Now you can see all that and then it'll change depending on the weapon you, you, you choose. But this is really the screen you want to pay attention to. So, we have Lynn, and in the blue are her stats. You can see the character's HP, Might, which is how much damage you're going to do, Hit, the percentage chance you have to hit, and Crit, the percentage chance you have to crit. Let me go over these one at a time. Again. I said in the introductory video I was going to make this really newbie friendly. If you already know all about this, about Fire Emblem, then don't worry about it. Might is, like I said, how much damage you're going to do. The times two floating above it is because Lin is really fast. Again, specifics will happen later. Just know that if you, for now, if you see that times two, you're going to strike twice. So Lin will strike, the enemy will attack, and then Lin will strike again. So she'll do 7 times 2, 14 damage. It already calculates in defense and things like that, so you don't have to do that. You just have to know basic math. 20 minus 14 is 6. The enemy will be left with 6 HP. The hit percentage is just what it is. Lin has a 100% chance to hit, which means she is guaranteed to hit. Period. The enemy has a 39% chance, which means there's a 39% chance that the enemy will hit. And there's a 3% chance that Len will do a critical hit. If a unit does a critical hit, it will do three times the, uh, the might value. So let's say Len criticals. She'll do 21 damage, seven times three. And then the next hit will have a 3% chance to crit. If you have any additional questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you have specifics, I'll be going over them as they become relevant and we get a little further into the game. Again, this is just the prologue. Take it easy. So let's attack! By the way, I love Lin's fighting style. She uh, draws from the sheath, which is my favorite sword fighting style. Ah! He <laughs> actually hit! And then, since the enemy attacked, the enemy goes first, but then combat would happen the same. Lin would still get her two hits. It'll just happen after the enemy goes. Victory! But I've been injured. I have need of a Volinary. So the enemy's always going to hit there because, again, tutorial. <laughs> so, we're going to select Lin. There's another bandit over by the over by the Gur to the west. You don't know what a Gur is? It's a type of round hut. Many nomads live in huts like these. Hmm. I would do well to use this time to administer a little first aid. No, that was supposed to be Lynn. I'm sorry. My bad. Move to the space marked by the flashing cursor. So we'll move here. I'm carrying a couple of volunaries in my satchel. They should heal me up. Would you get one for me? Yeah, sure, Lynn. No problem. So, open up the min item menu and select volunary. Next, choose use. So, Lin has a couple of, of uh, Volinari, sometimes they're just called Vols for short. Uh, these will restore some HP. Typically, Volinaries will restore uh, 10 HP, especially in the newer Fire Emblems. And some of the really old Fire Emblems, I think they can heal 20. But know that they're going to heal 10, so I hope I'm remembering that right. <laughs> like it says, restore some HP, so we're going to use one. And your character will get some HP back. This is one of the ways a, a character can be healed HP. Thank you, Central. Now, let's go get that brigand over by the Gur. 
So, let's move next to the enemy and attack again. Now you see, Lynn's attacked three times. Yes, you use uses every time the weapon is used. Even when you're counter-attacking. So, she's attacked three times, three uses of the Iron Sword are gone. This is really important to establish now, because you're going to really want to get into the habit of looking at durability for items. And you can see this bandit is a bit more hardy. It's going to strike harder, and Lin doesn't do as much damage. That's because this enemy has more defense. We'll go over to the stats when we can open up the page and everything. And really look at stats. Who do you think you are? Think you can stand up to Bada the Beast? Huh. Ow. Huh. Every time a unit attacks, they get EXP. Whew. He's tough. It all comes down to this next blow. Syndrome, if I fall, I want you to flee. You must escape! So then the enemy's gonna attack. Nope! Done! And that's Lynn's critical animation, which I love! She just moves really fast and slices the enemy. My favorite critical animations. What? How, how did you... Ugh. Level up! Level two. Come on, Lynn. Not a bad start. I'll take it. Phew, that was close. I sorely underestimated him. Sorry if I worried you. I'll need to be stronger if I'm going to survive. Strong enough that no one can defeat me. Lynn gains experience in each encounter. When she has enough experience, she will level up. As she increases in level, her abilities improve. Over time, she will grow much stronger. It's time to bring this chapter to a close. Select Lynn and move her to the gate where Bat of the Beast was standing. Select C's to complete Lynn's victory and your own. But before I do that, I'm going to pull back up that, that level up screen. And I'm going to go over the stats, what they all mean, and why if you're playing, if you're playing along or you've played this game before, or you've seen a Fire Emblem game, hey, Lynn didn't get those stats for me. Her stats were different. I'll go over that. So here we go. Now that we have this level up screen, let's go over the stats and what they mean. First off, you have the unit's class. Lynn is a lord. Lords are uh, really main characters, very integral to the story. All Fire Emblem games have a lord of some type. Sometimes they're named different, they have a different class, like for example, Ike from Fire Emblem Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. Ike was a ranger, but he functioned the same as the as a lord. The way it goes in Fire Emblem games, if the lord falls, it's an automatic game over. Then you see the level. Speaking of when a unit falls, HP. It's standard. If you've ever played any RPG, any game where you had hit points, that's what they are. When a unit's HP reaches zero, the unit dies. In Fire Emblem, death is permanent. Any character that dies is gone forever. So be very careful with your units. Now I'm going to take this time to go over something else. If a unit falls in battle, I'm going to be restarting that chapter. But I'm going to put one on the death slash game over counter. Because I'm going to treat it as a game over. And I'll end up redoing the chapter. Any fails, I'll put at the end of that video. Just so you can see how it happened. And get a laugh or you know something from it <laughs> next we have strength strength determines how much damage a unit will do melee people will have a strength value whereas units that cast spells will have it will say magic but it functions the same it'll help determine how much damage you do you'll combine strength along with the uh, weapons damage next is skill Skill helps determine how accurate you are with your weapons. Higher skill means more accuracy. 
Speed helps determine how quickly you go in combat. If a unit's speed he uh, kind of heavily out trumps a enemy unit's, then the unit will get to strike twice, like Lynn did here. She had far more speed than these bandits, so she was able to swing twice. If the enemy really outdoes your speed, though, the enemy will strike twice. And if the units are kind of close to each other, then they won't. Neither will strike twice. They'll just both strike once. All weapons have a weight to them. And I'm just going to go across to uh, Constitution. Constitution helps determine a how big of a weapons the unit can carry. When it comes to the uh, weapon weight, let's say the weight of a weapon is four. I don't remember how heavy the iron sword is. Lin has, as you can see, a constitution of five. This means that Lin will take no speed penalty. If the weapon's weight is higher than the unit's constitution, they begin taking a speed penalty, which will determine their overall attack speed, or AS for short. The calculation is speed minus weapon weight minus constitution uh, to zero. If it goes into the negatives, you just put zero. Okay? That determines a unit's attack speed. So let's say Lin's iron sword is a four. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, so 0. So 9 minus 0 equals 9. That's Lin's attack speed. Then the, in, the same calculation will be made for the enemy. And let's say these bandits were at a 4 after everything was taken in. If a unit's attack speed is 4 or more, that's when they double. I know, very heady. Don't worry about it. This is more for those people that you know, wanted to know the calculations, know how it works. All you have to do to test it is go up there and pull up that window that I was talking about. And you can see if the unit is going to strike twice or not. Until you click that attack button, you don't have to worry about it. You can always back out and move someplace else. That combat window is extremely handy. Use it to your advantage. Next is, uh, if we're just going to go up, resistance. A unit's resistance is their magical defense. This will help them take less damage from spells. As you can see, Lin doesn't have any. So if a unit would do 13 damage with the spell, it'd be magic plus the tomb, however much damage the tomb does, then Lin would take 13. Next is defense. You'll subtract defense out of the final calculation. So if a unit would do 13 damage, strength plus the uh, damage of the weapon, then they'll subtract 2, and that'll leave 11, and that's what you'll see on that screen. Again, you don't have to do any of the calculations. The combat window will do it for you. But it just gives you the sense of what characters are good at. And lastly is luck. Luck affects a few different things. For example, luck affects your critical defense, I believe. And it also affects your a chance to hit by a smaller amount than skill. So, in this example, Lin gained 1 HP, 1 Strength, and 1 Luck. There is a system in Fire Emblem called RNG, Random Number Generated. Random Number Generator, or Generated. This means that playthroughs are going to be different, because you don't know what units are going to get. This is where we'll talk about stat growths. When we meet new characters, I'll end up talking about their stat growths. I'll end up putting a... Uh, some text on the screen and you can see their stat growths. Stat growths tell you how a character a character's chance of getting plus one in in a certain uh, skill. For example, I'll just put Lin's stat growths up on the screen right now so you can see him. So let's take HP for example. Lin has as you can see a 70% chance to a 70% HP growth rate. That means whenever Lin levels up, there is a 70% chance that she will gain 1 HP, like you see here. And then so on and so forth. Strength 40%. There's a 40% chance that Lin will level up strength. These are determined by a unit's class. Certain classes are really good at things, while not so good at others. 
units always have a chance to to gain a stat in something. But like take Lin's defense for example, sometimes it's just a really low chance. Lin doesn't have a lot of defense. She relies more on dodging attacks with her higher skill growth and higher speed growth not being doubled. So there you go. There's growth rates. I really hope that makes sense. You can find out growth rates on websites like Game, F Game FAQs or uh, Serenus Forest, which is a good place. It has a whole bunch of fire a fire emblem. It's a site. It's a fan site dedicated to Fire Emblem, and it has a lot of good information on there as well. That way, you could find out the growth rates. If not, just play through the game and see what happens. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. That does it for this explanation. Again, as more characters come up, I'll end up putting their growth rates, and I'll talk about the classes as they begin to show up too, and talk a little bit about how they work in Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem series as a whole, and what they're good for. Lords, you have to feel, and Lords typically end up being really good units, just overall. They tend to have really good growths, better than a the class they kind of mimic. It's not very difficult. Hopefully I explained it to where it all makes sense. Now, we'll seize the gate. This is one of the uh, victory conditions that sometimes happens. Is you have to seize a certain place. And Lin will have to go up there and seize it. Good work, Central. Let's go home. Good morning, Central. Are you awake yet? That fight yesterday must have taken a lot out of you. Say, Central, I want to talk to you about something. You have some experience in the ways of war, I see. Would you allow me to travel with you? What? You want me to get permission from my parents? My mother and father died six months ago. Oh, jeez, now I feel bad. I'm sorry, Lynn. My people, the Lorca, they don't... I'm the last of my tribe. Bandits attacked and they killed so many people. The tribe was scattered. My father was our chieftain, and I wanted to protect our people. But I'm so young, and our people were old-fashioned. They wouldn't follow a woman. No one would follow me. Gee, I'm sorry, Lynn. I'm sorry. I've been alone for so long. Well, you can travel with me. No, no more. I will shed no more tears. Thank you. I'm better now. Central, I want... I must become stronger so that I may avenge my father's death. Yesterday's battle taught me something. I won't become stronger by sitting here alone. Syndrome, tell me you'll train me, that you'll let me travel with you. How could I say no? Come on, Lin. You will? That's wonderful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We'll be better off working together. I know it. You'll be my master strategist, and I'll be your peerless warrior. We can do it, right? Yeah, sure we can, Lin. Travel with Lin. Give her your aid and master the art of combat. Complete the tasks set out in each chapter and help Lin in her quest. Turn the instruction window on or off by pressing select. And with that, the prologue comes to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to end this episode here. Next time, we'll really start. Although, the tutorial, like I said, will go on for several chapters. That's why I really like FE7. because Some people don't like that, but I do. It gives players a chance to really get accustomed to combat. And I'll be along for the ride to, to help out. Lynn is one of my favorite characters. Some people don't like Lin. Uh, I really do. I like her fighting style. I like her character. 
and she reminds me of somebody really close to me so there's that as well I hope you enjoyed this very first episode of Fire Emblem 7 if it was a little dull for you don't worry the action will definitely pick up as we continue on but it's nice to get the basics down first so as your tactician I'm Cinder A9 remember to shoot for the stars and take care everyone <laughs>